Thanks, John. Pleasure. <laughs> and thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to chat with people that have had so much experience within law. You've had an interesting career so far and quite a diverse one. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Uh, yes, I, I've probably had two careers in the law. Um, first, um, in private practice where um, I went straight from articles to the one firm, core and core as it then was, um, uh, became an associate and then a partner. Uh, but after 10 years as a partner, I did a tree change and ran away to the country to grow grapes and uh, lose lots of money and uh, not have an income. And that led to my second career when the superannuation ran out to um, uh, go into uh, contracting. And I think I've had quite a nice balance of, um, and, I mean, it was our choice to do a lifestyle um, um, choice for the whole of our lives. We've been doing this for 35 years now. Um, but um, my second career quite enjoyed that two days a week, three days a week um, average um, doing discrete projects and uh, a couple of private clients, but balance of discrete projects, mostly in-house, sometimes for firms. And I've sat in um, for partners who've been away and, and various other things over the time. So it's been quite good. The diversity has been great. Yeah. It sounds, um, it does sound very broad and diverse and... Well, I always, always, it, it, of course, these days, remember, I left um, my, my full-time legal practice in 1986, um, but um, uh, I had, fortuitously for my second career, maintained a fairly general practice. So although I was technically commercial litigation partner, my father was a land developer, so I did broad acre subdivisions and things like that. Um, I did corporate type things as well. Um, so I sort of had this general background, um, jack of all trades, master of none as they say, uh, and, and so I was able to reinvent myself largely as a transactions lawyer, um, where you don't have to get so excited as you do if you're doing commercial litigation, and um, so it's better for the blood pressure, and um, you have discrete um, projects that have a start and an end, they actually finish, so that's, that's how I've done it. Looking back, why did you get into law? Law. Um, got into law, I, I, um, my father had been an accountant um, initially and uh, I didn't know any lawyers. Um, so I thought I'd um, do accounting, so I started first year commerce. Um, the, I remember the um, uh, lecturer at school in careers always said, oh, you've got a bit of a creative streak. Um, uh, that'll be a bit boring, and I think that was right. Um, so, so after a year, I, I um, articulated into law and ended up doing a combined law commerce degree. And, and oh, and why? Sorry, why? Why? Mm, just because it was creative, it was interesting. Um, uh, um, uh, I think it was um, a much um, happier outcome for me. Um, law, law is probably the greatest. Um, um, grounding of any discipline because it um, enables you to go in any direction. I would not hesitate to recommend anyone undertake a law degree. Mm -hmm. At what point did you think, oh, I need to get away from the law for a little bit and come into this <laughs> yeah. amazing well, vineyard you've created? Well, <clears throat> what happened was, I, I guess a couple of factors. Um, in retrospect, I didn't think so at the time and, and, and so on. I think probably I was made a, a, a partner at, at fairly young age and that was probably a bit too young. I, I had um, probably little regard for the value of money. I didn't realise how hard it was to actually earn a living in the cloistered environment of one of the big firms. Um, <clears throat> and um, also a bit, bit um, I guess a bit boring. Nothing I did would make a difference to whether I ate or not that night. It, it wasn't definitive. I was just part, a cog in a big wheel. Um, and and um, to cap it off, I went to a wine appreciation course and got sort of carried away and thought, oh, this is for me, all of this, this is such fun. I'd like to just do this. And so, and, and this came on the market. Um, this is, as you see, an 1860s um, winery with a great collection of historic buildings. Um, so <clears throat> um, there were no vines here at that stage. And um, one of the things we did that was correct, I think, was um, to think, okay, we'll have food 
as well because um, that'll give a bit of an ambience and so on. Uh, so we were probably the second after Ferguson's in the Arrow Valley to do a, um, a restaurant with, um, uh, with a winery and um, we, we realised soon that you can't actually make money that way so we um, had probably always planned to do functions and after 18 months when we built up our functions book, weddings and so on, that's what we've, we've done. So that's, uh, that's how we've progressed. When you decided to buy this, did you know it was going to be a success? No. And I don't, well, and has it been? <laughs> you haven't been speaking to my bank manager, obviously. <laughs> success. Um, I mean, success, we've, had a, we've achieved what we set out to do, which was had a, have a lovely life. So we eat and drink beyond our means. Yeah. Um, we drive German cars. We, we have a great life. We travel to China three times a year and have done for the last 10 years because that's our, our wine market that we've developed. Um, having a, a chef, an on, online in-house chef, makes it very hard to live otherwise. You know, it's been a great life. Um, but <clears throat> I can't immediately write you a cheque for a million bucks. Um, we, we, so what's success? Um, uh, we um, have um, probably made a loss, not probably, we certainly have made a loss um, almost every year that we've been here for 35 years and proud of it, and proud of it. What, what's the point of it? So, you know, there's a, a bit of a tax aspect um, to it, but it's still nice to have. And we've, in the last few years, we've made profits, I admit, but, um, uh, and, and happily so, but um, there was a long, long while where we struggled in our garret for our art and we finally um, expanded with, the, with integrity and, and so on and um, now have a much bigger wine business than is apparent from the vineyard here because we buy in and um, blend and, and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's so important for people to determine what success is for them <coughs> because it's not always, I suppose, financial. Yes, and yes. It's for you it was living the, the life and the dream. Enjoying, enjoying it. <laughs> Exactly, yes, yes, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. I know, I need a certificate from my doctor for lots of things. <laughs> How have you balanced your time between, I suppose, running and managing this and practising as a contract lawyer? They say behind every great man something that's International Women's Day. Women's Day so <laughs> yes. It's very appropriate, isn't it? Um, so I, I um, fortunately met, we were introduced on the snow at Mount Buller, um, my wife, who's an architect, and I'm a frustrated architect, so that was all quite difficult because we have to engage a third party architect to settle <laughs> where we're going and the designs that, uh, and, and building works. But um, um, Elizabeth is, is a natural people person and extremely competent, and so um, it's great I can run away and do my thing for my sort of intellectual satisfaction and um, a few dollars in the, in the pocket. and. Um, um, leave um, Elizabeth here. So I've been um, away a couple of days a week virtually for, um, um, for the whole of my second career for the last 35 years. But we live above the shop, as it were. We live in the homestead here, or we did until we sold recently. Um, and uh, so I'm always, we're always around. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose you've been contracting for quite some time now. <coughs> For you, what are the, the pros and cons of contracting? Of contracting? Um, the, the cons are it's irregular, um, I guess. Um, the cons are you often um, go into a total, utter and complete mess. Um, but then the other side of that, um, I guess the pros, if it's a mess, there's great satisfaction in sorting it out. Um, quite enjoy all of that. Other pros, they're discrete project so you go and do something and then the file finishes you don't have a file hanging around for years um, so that's quite good um, I, I probably enjoyed more the in-house environment when I've been in-house than um, in a firm environment but um, both have been both have been good and always interesting work but it's actually quite difficult at a higher level and with a um, few years, I'm not in the first flush of youth as you may have noticed, uh, but uh, when I started doing this I was um, uh, nearly 40 in my late 30s. Um, really hard, um, there's certainly age discrimination out there in the, in the market as, as you will have noted, um, uh, but I've been fortunate it's largely through contacts and 
other things that I've been able virtually to do back-to-back -back contracts. And it was only um, when I turned 65, just <clears throat> a little while ago, that um, the phone stopped ringing. So it just stopped. Extraordinary. There must have been a note on a toilet wall somewhere. It just stopped. <laughs> Unbelievable. So. <laughs> You've also contracted for in-house and private practice. What have been the main differences between each environment? In-house in is pretty um, regulated, um, uh, as in hierarchical. So, so there's a bit of a pegging order. Um, so that, that's, um, um, you, you know what boundaries are and, and so on. Um, one of the good things is frequently you don't have timesheets, <laughs> which is a wonderful, wonderful relief. Um, in in house, um, you're dealing with clients, and, and clients aren't the problem for me in the law, it's other lawyers are the problem for me in the law. What would you say to a lawyer that is obviously practicing um, full time and they're thinking of, I'm going to give this contracting? Yeah, so well, it's, it's, the, the answer is obvious from my background, I guess, do it. Um, but you have to realise that um, uh, it isn't a guaranteed source of income, it, it's come and go. And um, uh, the market is very, it became terribly crowded. So many younger lawyers, um, I think the, the market is over, overflowing with, with graduates. Um, and um, of course, particularly the part-time market where um, Law, I gather, is now these days regarded as a female uh, dominant occupation, and uh, so many female lawyers um, want to balance home life and, and children and family things with work, which is which is great. But, but they're just so crowded in that marketplace these days. So I, uh, <coughs> um, I think a reality check is required, yeah. but but. It gives you the great flexibility, it gives you those rewards of completing discrete tasks and that's very satisfying and, and go in and be a bit creative and, and so on. So I've enjoyed all of that. I still have a couple of private clients which I yeah. deal with and quite enjoy that as well. Keeps you active. Absolutely. That's good. <laughs> Off the street. <laughs> Out of the wine bars. <laughs> yeah, and you were an equity partner yeah. um, quite some time ago. What's some advice you'd give to lawyers that are wanting to have that career progression from lawyer to senior associate to partner to equity? This is so long ago. It was 1976 I was an equity partner at a very young age. Um, and I was actually in our firm, um, the last one to go in under 100% um, approval requirement and the last one to go in to pay a capital sum um, to, to go in. Um, I was also the first one to leave under the new, ten years later, the first one to leave under the new system whereby we um, had a, a, a staggered superannuation payment to go, to go out which enabled us to have an income while we were sort of setting this up and getting established here. Um, I guess the rules have changed a bit. Back, back then um, <clears throat> you, you had to work hard, it wasn't as important to have enormous renderings. Um, I think these days it's enormous renderings and um, always I think it's the ability to fit in a certain um, culture, each firm has their own culture obviously, and being vaguely pleasant, um, keeping your nose clean or, or something. And for lawyers that are watching this and are thinking, I want to follow my passion but I also <laughs> want to, I suppose, practice law like you have, have done. What would you say to inspire them to go ahead and do it? Well, obviously, we did it. Um, uh, we've had a great life, um, but you have to balance the dollars. If you want to pursue the dollars and have your BMW and your Rolex 12 months after you graduate, um, don't do this. Um, do stick there and work hard. And you've recently sold Gunawar. Yes, What's yes, next for yes, you? yes. Um, we, we, we sold to Chinese um, uh, who are going to spend some 30 mil on um, a hotel and mixed restaurants and we've moved out of the homestead just recently which will now be made into a private club. So um, we, we um, have an apartment in the city and uh, uh, um, uh, a house in uh, Castlemaine in the country and um, are going to enjoy um, all of that but we will keep um, some interest in wine, in the wine industry and we will, um, I, I for one will keep an interest in um, my a couple of um, uh, clients that I still act for and I we were talking earlier I, I have a matter that just started um, a few months ago and probably looking at the list of things I have to do there's almost another 12 
18 months work left in it at even three days a week. Um, so, so I have uh, lots of ways to keep me out of the wine bars for the moment. <laughs> John, thank you so much for sharing your insight. Um, it's cr incredible advice. My pleasure. Well, I don't know. I don't know. No warrant. No, no warranties. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Can we have a drink now? Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>